Hello, lovely people. It's Friday. Fry yay. Our final show of the season. But we will be creating some content here, and I have some fun stuff planned on at Koi Wire on Insta, Snapchat, and TikTok as well. Without further ado, let's do what we do. I'm Koi Wire. This is CNN 10, and we start with a thought provoker. What do you see when you read this below? Don't say it aloud. Just raise your hand if you see this. Opportunity is nowhere. Okay? Good. Now, Raise your hand if you saw this instead. Opportunity is now here. Even better. This is a good reminder for us that life isn't about what we see, but how we see it. We should always try to remember to see the good and the positive in anything we encounter so we can attack our days with hope and optimism and bring some positive vibes to our day. Now to the news. Let's head to about 45 miles southeast of Mexico City, Mexico, for the latest developments on the country's most dangerous active volcano. It's called Popocatépetl, and numerous explosions have been recorded in recent days. Some 25 million people live within a 60-mile radius of this volcano. Schools in dozens of municipalities have been closed. The volcano's ash even wreaking havoc in the air. Benito Juarez International Airport delaying flights, even temporarily closing last weekend. Authorities say millions of people have been told to prepare for a possible evacuation. The U.S. Embassy in Mexico has issued a warning saying the volcano has exhibited increased activity since May 15, registering hundreds of tremors and smoke and ash exhalations. The volcano had been dormant for decades, but erupted in 1994, and since then, its rumblings have become a part of the daily lives of the residents. Our Patrick Ottman has more. Mexico's most dangerous active volcano once again is putting residents on alert, as over the last several days, uh, there have been eruptions witnessed at the Popocatapetl volcano, and that is causing officials to raise the level of alert to uh, a yellow alert, which indicates that residents, and there are millions of residents who live in the vicinity of this volcano, may need to consider evacuating should this volcano erupt. Already, uh, there has been a deterioration of the air quality as ash has gone into the area. It has caused residents to have to sweep up the ash on the streets. Uh, officials are warning people to make sure that the ash does not get into their water supply. Some schools have been closed, as well have so, have, have some parks. There have been flights that have been uh, delayed as a result of the ash because of course ash uh, once it is emitted into the atmosphere can be very damaging very dangerous uh, to, to air travel at this point officials say that because this is an active uh, volcano it's been active now uh, for some years that they are simply in a position of observing the volcano that they feel they would have enough time before any a major eruption to warn residents to begin evacuating that appeared to be less ash that had been admitted by the volcano on Tuesday, but all the same as people in uh, these Mexican states keep a close eye on this volcano and what could happen next. Uh, no one is breathing a sigh of relief just yet. Patrick Ottman, CNN Havana. This Monday marks Memorial Day in the U.S., the federal holiday where Americans honor and pay tribute to those who've lost their lives while serving in the military. The day, which also signals the unofficial start to summer, originated in the years following the Civil War, which ended in 1865, the country establishing a Decoration Day, where the nation could decorate the graves of those who died in war with flowers. Well, over 100 years later, in 1971, Congress made it an official holiday. CNN had the chance to speak with a few veterans and active duty military about the first time they knew they wanted to serve their country. When I was laying there, I really, you know, didn't think that I was going to make it. Um, the Marines that were around me, I'm sure that they didn't think I was going to make it either. So, you know, it really shows me that I'm, I'm here for a reason. What really made things clear for me was, you know, looking back at my life up to you know, this point, I always did everything for myself and I never really took a step back and said, you know what, I just need to start doing things for other people. And I knew that I could do that in the Marines. My dad was furious. My dad, my dad didn't talk to me for like a solid month. He really hated it when I said I was going to leave to go in the military. You know, I'm from Chicago originally, I'm from the South Side. He thought that, you know, the scholarship and education and stuff that I had would, you know, get me out of the hood, you know which it did, but I wanted to get farther out than that. I had higher aspirations of that. I wanted to get out of the country. And the Air Force was supposed to be the most intelligent branch of the service. I went all over. I mean, I went to Scotland, I went to Wales, I went to, every time I had a chance to get off, I went somewhere, I traveled somewhere. At 21, 
I was just finishing my nurse's training when World War II broke out. In fact, we were on, <laughs> on the chow line when over the loudspeaker it was announced that the war had started. Being in the service made me grow up. I was a young girl, just lived home, and all of a sudden you're thrown out with all kinds of people and places that you read about but never saw. It was quite an experience. It's something I'm very happy I did, but I would never want to do it again. My uncle was killed by a terrorist organization, and I knew at that point that I wanted to f fight against those type of individuals. And so I graduated from Ranger School on October 23rd of 2009, and just about six weeks later, I was in Afghanistan. Growing up in South Shore, Long Island, you, know, you hear about West Point, which is where I was fortunate enough to go to college. I was a junior when 9-11 happened. I distinctly remember being in class. No one was teaching. We were just sitting there watching. Everyone was in shock. Most of the professors there are active duty military. Each one had made a comment to the effect of, you know, cadets, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what this means, but your nation's going to call on you to go to go serve. I never thought I'd stay in for 10 years, but I enjoyed it very much so, and it was the best job I've ever had in my life and likely will ever have, so I look back on it with just the fondest memories. 10 second trivia. What are Saturn's rings believed to be made of? Rock and ice, gas and iron, palladium and ash, or copper? According to NASA, the rings around Saturn are composed of rock and ice. Could Saturn's iconic rings be disappearing? NASA's Cassini mission orbited Saturn between 2004 and 2017, and a new study is revealing fresh insights into when they might vanish. The data suggests that Saturn's rings are young, by celestial body standards that is, possibly a few hundred million years old, and researchers estimate the rings will only be around for another few hundred million more. Some astronomers have argued that Saturn's bright icy rings might be younger than expected because they haven't been eroded or darkened by interactions with meteoroids across billions of years. <laughs> The city of Kyle, asking everyone named Kyle to rise up for a record largest same name gathering. Well, that's today's story, getting a 10 out of 10. Piles of Kyles from miles and miles, even Canada gathering in the tiny Texas city, 1,490 of them. Well, Kyle be darned, they missed the Guinness World Record set by 2,325 Ivans in Bosnia and Herzegovina in 2017. Still, huge salute to all of you and hope it wasn't too confusing anytime someone shouted, hey Kyle. Speaking of shout outs, I am so grateful to all of you. Teachers, administrators, parents, and students, like our friends at Mr. Cummings class at Marsh Creek in Downingtown, PA. Thank you for making me part of your day. And thanks to my team, Jeremy, Jer Bear, <laughs> Jackie, Jocelyn, Nader, Sophie, McKenna, and Maya. You all work so hard to make this show the best 10 minutes in news for all of you. We're going to miss you till we're back with our daily shows in August. So to all of you, and especially all of our seniors out there, go and be great. Remember, greatness isn't just innate. It's something you cultivate. Outwork everyone every single day. I'm Coy Wire. This is CNN 10. You are more powerful than you know. It's been a blessing to spend this season with you. <laughs>